Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us here for Crampton News First at Four. I'm Whitney Ward. Well, tonight we are continuing to track a wildfire that is actively burning right now near Colville. We do know that fire started sometime Wednesday night, and at last check, it's burned more than 3,000 acres. Fire officials have issued level three evacuations west of Highway 20 near Locke. DNR says that area is rural, but there are homes and campgrounds there. So if you're in that area, be careful. And Crem 2's Nathan Hyun traveled to the location of that fire today. He's bringing us the latest tonight. I'm here at the Kalispell Powwow grounds where the fire camp is set up. Now, even though the fire is about an hour of a drive away, you can still see the large plumes of smoke continuing to grow. And with the red flag warning, firefighters are staying on guard. The fire started on Wednesday evening. Firefighters don't expect the fire to die anytime soon and a red flag warning was issued for Friday and Saturday due to increased heat and wind. With Labor Day weekend approaching, firefighters want people to know that it's not safe to get close. Our message to them is please try to stay out of the area. With this fire, there are several spot fires, which means there's a main fire, and due to any winds and upslope winds that are up there, um, we'll spot the fires out to different locations, so we really try to get on those as quickly as possible. Malone says that the Boulder Mountain fire was likely started by a lightning strike. He says there are no structures threatened, but level three evacuations are in place for surrounding campgrounds. Since the fire is so remote, there is only one way in and out. Firefighters are doing their best to find the easiest access points to fight the fire. So there are about 80 people fighting this fire, and I'm told additional resources are expected to come. And fire officials want to remind people that it is not safe to come camping here even though the fire seems far away. In Kusik, Nathan Hun, Krem 2 News. And turning now to weather, we are currently under both a heat advisory as well as a red flag warning. So, of course, that risk for wildfires remains very high. Definitely is not helping those crews who are working hard on those fires. And we know there are other fires as well. So meteorologist Michelle Boss joining us right now. And Michelle, what does this mean as we head into Labor Day weekend, of course? more smoke perhaps? Yeah, so one of the things obviously most people have probably already noticed today is that it's been a little bit hazy out there, smoky in some spots, so we do have deteriorated air quality. As of four o'clock, our air quality in the moderate category with an AQI of 68. It is possible with increased winds on Saturday. Uh, obviously, we cannot predict the behavior of wildfires, uh, but the potential for stronger winds on Saturday, some isolated dry thunderstorms. Uh, it's possible our air quality could get worse this weekend, but at the very least, uh, we are still going to have to deal with a little bit of haze. Satellite and radar showing quiet conditions out there right now. We've got plenty of sunshine and very hot temperatures, but because of the dry conditions, the increased winds and the threat of dry lightning, red flag warning will continue through the day on Saturday for most of eastern Washington, the Idaho Panhandle, and even northwest Montana. Temperature wise, very hot. In fact, our record high for today is only 97 degrees. We're at 96 right now, so it's very possible we could tie that record high today. We are not looking at temperatures to be quite as hot for the holiday week Weekend, but they're still going to be above average in the 80s. Here's a look at the short term forecast. Uh, clear but hazy this evening. Temperatures still in the 90s, uh, even as we get into the early evening hours. But highs in the 80s for Saturday. Isolated dry thunderstorms breezy. Sunday looks a little bit better. Still hot, but sunny skies in 87. And for Labor Day, a sunny and warm day with highs in the mid 80s. All right, Michelle, thank you very much. And it's been two years since the Bab Road fire destroyed the towns of Malden and Pine City. It was Labor Day weekend. 60 mile an hour winds sent that fire racing across 15,000 acres. It ravaged everything in its path. 120 homes and 100 other buildings burned down, including the town's fire station and the post office. And in just one afternoon, countless lives changed. Today, Krem 2's Amanda Rowley went back to that town. She shares now how far they've come to rebuilding. Welcome to the newest town in Washington state. Two years ago, the Bab Road fire leveled the towns of Malden and Pine City. Since then, the community was able to build this temporary fire station in the town of Malden. And it happened through funding from FEMA. It houses this fire truck, which was donated by DNR, and this truck donated by the Spokane Valley Fire Department. But what's really cool is now both trucks don this Malden Fire Department logo. Our fire station is better prepared. Our, our firemen are, are better trained. Uh, we have the equipment that we could, could knock down a fire now. Having the temporary fire station here absolutely does give us a little breathing room to feel like if 
you know, God forbid that a fire were to come again, that we are a lot more prepared. The Bab Road fire destroyed 67 homes. Today, 26 homes have now been rebuilt. Now, the mayor hopes that the permanent fire station and community center will be completed by this time next year. Reporting in Malden, Amanda Rowley, Creme 2 News. And more than two years ago, two planes crashed into each other in the skies over Lake Coeur d'Alene, killing eight people. This week, the National Transportation Safety Board finally released its findings into what caused that crash. The investigation found mechanical issues did not play a role. Instead, both pilots simply did not see each other in time to avoid that collision. The death of Neil Lunt, one of the pilots and the owner of Brooks Seaplanes, forced that popular attraction to close for two years. Uh, he was one of those who was killed, and in July, Brooks Seaplanes did reopen under a brand new owner. The plan to send $500 million back to Idaho taxpayers, as well as $410 million to Idaho schools, and flatten the state's income tax rate to less than 6%. It all passed both the House and the Senate last night, and it was signed by Governor Brad Little last night as well. This bill contains the tax rebate and a long sought after, sought after flat tax liked by Republicans. Democrats liked the education spending part of it. Governor Little signed that bill into law last night. A proposed levy for Hayden law enforcement funding has been slightly lowered, as reported by our partners at the Coeur d'Alene Press. Originally, that levy was asking for almost $600,000 to help fund six new deputies for the city, but now the price has been lowered by $50,000. A replica of the Vietnam Veterans Memorial will be in Liberty Lake this month. It's a half-size replica, replica, and it's toured all 50 states since 1984. Its stop in Liberty Lake will be the only one it makes out here in the West this year. That memorial will be located at Pavilion Park in Liberty Lake uh, from September 15th through the 19th. That memorial will open 20, it will be open 24 hours a day, and it will be free for all visitors. We've got an update now on a story that we first brought you yesterday about a little girl with terminal cancer. She's trying to make it back home here to be with her family, and she is simply too sick and fragile to fly commercially. So one local organization that heard her story sent out a rallying cry to the community, and in just over an hour, they had multiple pilots willing to fly her in their personal planes. Now, thanks to the quick thinking and generosity of one local pilot, that little girl is landing right here in Spokane today to live out her final days at home instead of in a hospital. Riding her dad's pickup and have snacks. <laughs> you know, she wants to see her siblings. She wants to eat pizza. So we do have a crew in the field right now where she will be landing shortly here in the next 30 minutes. So we'll make sure to come back to you with a live look as soon as that happens.